Hello and welcome once more to Red Gaming Tech. My name is Amata. Today is the 8th of December and I'm here as always to give you your daily dose of your latest gaming news. This time I have some news for Tomb Raider fans. Uh, some of you may have heard the rumour that Crystal Dynamics were planning on bringing their game to the PS4 and Xbox One. Well, those were officially confirmed last night at the VGX Awards and they have been announced for a January release on both versions. Now, the console versions, or next-gen console versions to be more accurate, have been dubbed the Definitive Edition and we'll see the game get a graphical look of paint for next-gen platforms as well as a tweaked version of of Lara Croft's face. Now it will be a slight reworking of the previous character model that will look a bit more like Croft's current voice and mocap actress Camilla Luddington. Now as I said previously the game's existence has been rumoured for some time but was confirmed during the VGX Awards but what's also interesting is that Sleeping Dogs developer United Front Games was revealed to help out with development. Now, what is really interesting me is that the definitive edition will include a previously PC-only feature, and that is the next-gen hair for Lara Croft, which of course used AMD's TressFX technology, which is definitely an interesting pr prospect to imagine. Uh, if I just cast my memory back, not all that long ago really, when Tomb Raider first came out, AMD's TressFX um, wasn't really properly optimised for even NVIDIA cards at the time and if you were to turn TressFX on using an NVIDIA card around the time of launch it would tank the frame rate pretty damn hard. Now of course that was dealt with later on by NVIDIA in a graphics driver patch but still it remains interesting to me that a feature that was once so AMD focused to the point where you know um, it would tank NVIDIA cards has now been able to work on the next-gen consoles. Now of course both of them are using AMD technology which probably helps but it's still an interesting thing nonetheless. Now in addition to these details Square Enix has confirmed some of the content that will be present in the game. You will get the pre-order bonus tomb which is the Tomb of the Lost Adventurer plus a bunch of the game's multiplayer add-ons which is 8 DLC maps, 6 weapons and 4 characters. As well as this, you will get six outfits for Lara, plus digital copies of the Dark Horse comic Tomb Raider The Beginning, Brady Art Games Arts book Tomb Raider The Art of Survival, plus Zachary Levi's The Final Hours of Tomb Raider documentary series. Now the Xbox One version will include connect voice controls for weapon modding and menus. And when you are using the PS4 version, the light on your controller will light up when using the torch, which is an interesting feature, kind of cool I suppose, but obviously not really that much use for gameplay. What's really going to interest me is a direct comparison between PC, PS4 and Xbox One versions. Now given that the presence of Tress effects in the next-gen console versions, it's pretty clear that we will be seeing a port from the PC version. Now when they said a graphical lick of paint, what does that actually mean? Does it mean an improvement? Possibly. It's entirely possible that they want to bump up the detail just a little bit, but it's hard to know what they mean by that, to be honest. Graphical lick of paint could literally mean that they're adding balloon animals into every scene for all we know. Obviously that would be kind of interesting I suppose, but unlikely. Um, I am curious to see how the consoles deal with trash effects though, and I would be definitely curious about the graphics. So. They haven't said a direct specific uh, release date, just a release window of January, so not too long to wait at all. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.